want when you need it. This is your Talk of the Town news update. Welcome, everybody. Good morning to you. Thanks for being with us. It is uh, Talk of the Town on this uh, Friday TGIF. We made it. Hurricane Ian picking up strength as it moves uh, north towards uh, Georgia and the Carolinas. And Ian hitting Florida's Gulf Coast as a Category 4 storm, flooding entire neighborhoods, destroying homes and buildings, and leaving millions without power. Search teams have rescued hundreds of people trapped by the floodwaters. The president is warning this could be the deadliest hurricane in Florida's history. We have a tropical storm warning in effect for our listening area and much of North Carolina. Governor Roy Cooper is urging people to avoid unnecessary travel as Ian impacts us. This storm can still be dangerous and even deadly. Heavy rains, up to seven inches in some areas, are likely to bring flooding. Landslides are a threat in our mountains and there's a chance of tornadoes statewide. While North Carolina is ready to send more help to Florida, the governor says he wants to ensure that North Carolina is able to get through this storm first. He has activated 80 National Guard troops. Swift Water Rescue teams are also ready to deploy. State emergency management officials say they're not expecting widespread evacuations in coastal counties, but the governor says they're planning for impacts statewide. Today, Pitt, Lenore, Beaufort, Greene County, they are the school systems that are closed. Craven, Washington, and Carteret counties are on a remote day today. Looking at the Duke Energy uh, power outage uh, map, looks like uh, maybe in the uh, area of Havelock, uh, there are over 400 uh, outages. Newport with uh, close to 20 outages. Uh, New Bern has about 120 out- outages currently. Jacksonville, just a handful so far. Uh, Otway with a couple of outages being reported, and Atlantic is reporting 379 outages as of now. There are over 500 outages reported in uh, the Wilmington area and uh, over 1,000 outages reported so far in uh, Wake County. Well, counties in the east are working with emergency management officials for whatever Ian brings. Craven County Emergency Services Director Stanley Kite says his team continues to be in constant contact with the Division of Emergency Management and the National Weather Service branch. The common reminder is to stay prepared and informed. Uh, The director says that they'll be ready for any storm changes, including rising water. Kite says they have not made any official calls on decisions for evacuations. North Carolina state officials are worried about price gouging again. Attorney General Josh Stein warning residents to be on the lookout for scams, gouging, and charity fraud. In the wake of Hurricane Ian, businesses are banned from unreasonably marking up items once a state of emergency goes into place, which has, uh, which was started this week by the governor. Stein says he wants anyone to report concerns of price gouging to his office. All right, those are your news headlines uh, on this uh, rainy Friday. Let's go down to the Storm Team 9 Weather Center. Most popular guy in town uh, and in our on our airwaves. Uh, is going to be Rob Martin this morning because he's going to give you the Ian forecast. Rob? A tropical storm warning is in place today. Breezy conditions early this morning turn outright windy into the afternoon. Wind gusts up to 40 to 50 miles an hour. We'll also have a tornado threat by late morning into the early evening hours along with very heavy rain all the way into the nighttime hours. This could persist into Saturday morning. From the Storm Team 9 Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Rob Martin for Talk 96.3 and 103.7. Thanks, Rob. 62 in Greenville with rain showers this morning. 66 in New Bern with rain. In Washington, 65 degrees showers. Also uh, in Jacksonville, we have 64 degrees. Down on the coast, Moorhead City checking in with 66. K-Town, stay down. The hometown shout out 63 with uh, rain falling right now. A look at uh, Tampa, beautiful shot of Tampa in the aftermath of the uh, storm that had Ian passed just south to that city. Pirates are going to be there this weekend. Instead, they'll be in Boca Raton playing South Florida in football. We will uh, give you an idea of uh, everything going on, news, sports, weather. Big Hen is on his way in, so stay with us. Come on, y'all, let's take a ride.
It's only 8 a.m. and it's going to be another hot one. Today's high is 85 degrees. Dave, it's 8 a.m. Fried chicken, better with Pepsi. <sighs> and we're all location at one of my favorite places in the whole planet because this is some of the best food you're ever going to eat in your life. We are at Nino's on Red Banks Road in Greenville. It's one of my hangouts. It's one of the places that I love. I got my friend Pietro Pasolacqua. How'd I do? You did great. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the food. What makes this place? I know it's special Italian from authentic Italians, but tell us why it's so special. Uh, because everything we do, it's it really what we came up on the menu from, from what we did at home, from my grandparents, my parents. Uh, so it's exactly what we eat at home, and that's what the way we cook. That's why it's special. And the atmosphere in this place is special also. Uh, from the bar to the uh, two dining areas, you got two different dining areas, and now the weather's nice, so there's going to be a lot of folks that want to eat outside. Uh, yeah, we, we have two rooms. One room is a little designed a little different. Uh, we're also working on the patio to make it more attractive and more uh, useful in the summer with a cocktail uh, service. And uh, we're always improving our, our services. And of course, my friends here, my buddy, uh, Chef Massimo, who I love, and uh, Sal and Pietro, you guys do a great job here. Not just Italian, but I had a great pork chop here the other night. You got great steaks, too. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're also adding filet mignon in, in the future on our menu. And uh, Massimo is coming out with a really good uh, uh, side dishes for it. And uh, so we, we're really excited to come out with new meats and fish uh, dishes. All right, Nino's on Red Banks Road in Greenville. Same people that give you Marabella's and the great pizza that you get at Marabella's, but this is fine dining at Nino's. If you haven't been here, you don't know what you're missing. Come see them at Nino's on Red Banks Road. And Pietro, what is that famous saying about Nino's? Uh, the food that you enjoy with people that you love. Another rock and roll weekend. Burgers, better with Pepsi. <sighs> talk to me, talk, talk, talk to me. Time to start your day the talk of the town way. The local news, weather, and information you need, plus all the extras. <laughs> Fun and laughs as you get your work day going. Broadcasting live from the Radio Ranch, this is Talk of the Town hey! with Henry Hinton and Patrick Johnson on Talk 96.3 and 103.7. Hey, 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 welcome uh, to Talk of the Town on the North Carolina Radio Station of the Year. We're very, uh, oh, very honored and proud of that. that humble brag. I like it. Well, I, I mean, like it. No, do you remember the old TV show with the guy from the Real McCoys? What was the, the, the uh, what was it? The Will, he was played a show called Will Sonnet. What was that old guy's name that played Grandpa in the Real McCoys? He used to say, No brag, I don't know. just. No brag, just fact. <laughs> 60, I like that, though. That's 62 good. degrees. Well, I mean, I'm proud of our staff. I'm proud of all of our folks that made that happen. Yeah. I mean, well, you again. Are you kidding me? This, uh, this didn't happen the until. The state of North Carolina? Are you kidding me? This didn't happen until the P-Man became a, a permanent fixture yet again on this fine radio product. So, who's, uh, who's bragging now? It ain't bragging if it's the fact, Big Hen. No brag, just fact. No brag, just fact. 62 degrees, it's raining, and it's already, uh, I'll tell you, driving conditions in Greenville, believe it or not, are already pretty dangerous. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of standing water on the road, so be careful out there. This We have to drive really slow going to work this morning, folks. Yep, be that's careful. the concern. We all, we all got to take care of each other here during this thing. Oh, boy, looking at that video from Florida yesterday is frightening. Yeah, sad, sad. I was really thinking sad. about the people that I know that live along the um, west coast of Florida. I hope our friends at Beasley Broadcasting are okay. You know, they they're right there in Fort Myers. I need to yeah, text, they sure are. I need to text <clears throat> Bruce uh, Bruce Beasley and make sure that everything's okay down there. Beasley uh, had a station honored uh, at that event, didn't they? Yeah, if I recall. Yeah, yeah, they sure did. Good for them. Um, nice folks. Yeah, you know. Uh, Beasley, uh, George Beasley was one of the nicest. You know, we, George died two years ago. He's one of the nicest, yes. nicest people that I ever met in the broadcasting industry. 
and and uh, you know they um, they're no longer competitors of ours, but we competed against them for a long, long time. And you know, I never ran into any of the Beasley family where they were just not ac- absolutely friendly and delightful, and we had a great relationship. I'm still friends with uh, Caroline, Bruce, all those guys, and they all live right down there, right in that Fort Myers area. I was also thinking, you know, who else is parents lived at port st Lucie, and i guess they still do was jennifer holtz's mom and dad yeah i was thinking yeah. about the holtz family last night looking at that video i hope gosh i hope everybody's okay and i guess it turned out that that that, that, that what the guy said the the sheriff down there in lee county he spoke too soon didn't he He was talking about well hundreds I, I, of deaths and they they've not they've not even come close to confirming that yeah, it's right. At last check, a dozen. I, the, I don't know where this got lost in translation, but apparently there were a lot of calls for help, and that was into the hundreds. Well, DeSantis didn't. Did, he didn't really slam the guy in his press conference last night. But I watched some of uh, Ron DeSantis' By the way, press conference how, last how night. How great he, has he been? I'm, I'm during in mid sentence here. I'm in mid sentence. Well, he you was, interrupt me all the time. And he was. And he was. He was quick to point out that there had been some misinformation on national television. Okay, uh, yeah, he was good last night. I got some. Uh, I got some stuff. He's from him. fabulous. He's we're, fabulous. We're going to hear from Ron DeSantis in a minute. They, there's so many people trying to politicize this as always. Well, let's get uh, the latest here. I, uh, this came in about one hour ago from the National Weather Service. Let's give you the very latest. We get their briefings when they send them out. So I um, send them to my grandma, Big Hen. She likes them. She, oh, you're she gets them on the I, I, I forwarded them on the iPhone. I sure do. So here's what we're expecting for eastern North Carolina. Uh, this will be a prolonged impact of wind, rain, and elevated water levels. Now, originally they were telling us it was not going to be a wind event, remember? Mm-hmm. So now they're saying we're going to have wind, rain, and elevated water levels. We're also already experiencing higher than normal water levels due to a persistent strong northeast wind. Now, I saw – some photographs last night of the water already coming over the walkway at union point park in newburn that did that worried me after what we went through a couple years ago in newburn the winds will eventually shift to the southeast as ian approaches the south carolina coast later today this hurricane has a very large wind field remember that impacts can occur well away from the center of the storm regardless of where it makes landfall so a tropical storm warning now in effect for all of eastern North Carolina from Kill Devil Hills to uh, Topsail Beach. All the way as far west as Greenville and Hamilton and Kinston. Storm surge warning in effect for the Noose River, the higher higher confidence of two to four feet of in, inundation, <clears throat> whatever that word means. Storm surge watch is in effect from Surf City to Duck. Also along the, <clears throat> pardon me, the western Pamlico Sound, including the Pamlico River, also the Pungo and the Bay Rivers, uh, we're, t- we're expecting uh, moderate. Oh, Lord, I just knocked it off. Hang on. I got to get it. Do back. I need to pick this up? Uh, there, mo- minor to moderate coastal flooding, two to four feet in, of inundation possible for low lying areas along the Noose River Basin, two to three feet possible near North Topsail Beach, down East Carteret, and along Pamlico River, one to three feet of inundation possible. Uh, Could you please Google inundation? Because I'm not 100% sure what that means. I guess that means where the water will come across the banks of the river, right? Yes, I'm on it, Googling it. One to three feet of inundation possible for low-lying areas southern and western Pamlico Sound, Bay and Pungo Rivers, and Oceanside, Ocracoke Island. We're expecting long duration of strong northeast to east winds, producing minor to moderate uh, coastal flooding winds shifting to the southeast. Uh, Okay, so. um, Big Hen? Yes. Inundation is the amount of water that occurs above normally dry ground as a result of flooding. Can they not use words we don't understand down there in, at the weather station? Come on, guys. Yeah. I know you're We listening. were looking at, you know, Jill's family uh, in Bellhaven there. Every time, every time there's something going on, it, it floods all the way up to their, yeah. into their yard. So this is uh, concerning to see for Bellhaven and Washington and that sort of thing. So Other warnings here. A few tornadoes are possible through tonight. 
Um, you need to have multiple ways to get warnings and be able to seek shelter quickly. Mm. Uh, with regard to um, boating, which, I mean, is anybody really thinking about it? I mean, I saw that video of that guy being rescued off of a sailboat, and I'm like, did the hurricane sneak up on you? I, wasn't that – Somebody I mean, said to me, and, and I know, might have thought this put, too. He's putting people's lives in danger who have to go out and get him. The man should be taught a lesson. Let him stay out there. If you're that dumb, I mean, honestly, if you're in your home and something happens, you can't help it. But I mean, I mean if we've you're seen on this thing boat, coming for a week. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. What is that old? We need to play that. You know what we need to do? We need to find that hurricane laugh track from, from James Gregory. You know where he's. <laughs> He's asking, did this thing sneak up on y'all? <laughs> so dangerous seas through Saturday. Beach uh, erosion is going to happen along the coast. Very dangerous beach condition, conditions and high threat rip currents. I don't know if anybody's crazy enough to go in the water. There's always somebody. Well, they're crazy enough to be on a boat. Yeah, good Lord. So that's from the National Weather Service, the very latest this morning. Um. Let me say a couple of things. We'll get back to, uh, you know, what happened in Florida yesterday and some of the comments from Ron DeSantis. Uh, congratulations to all involved in, in the second annual uh, Better Skills, Better Jobs Career Fair yesterday. Over 1,000 people at that career fair yesterday. Can you believe that? 1,000 people showed up for that thing. And... Um, that uh, that included a lot of them. I was told uh, last night a lot of them came because they heard us on our broadcast yesterday morning. So thank you for um, thank you for that. Thanks to all the people who worked so hard putting that together. Um, and I hope a lot of people got jobs, and I hope some of the employers got what they needed out of that yesterday. That thing's turned into be a real model for uh, how to how to try to connect job seekers with employers good for them uh yesterday on cnn don lemon <laughs> on lemon it's, it's fun it's funny to watch all of these uh lip lip guys go after you know climate change you know they're blaming all this on climate change right they're blaming, yes. they're blaming it on republicans yes. and you know it's just crazy yes. how the, and it's the media who does it now, which is the frustrating thing. I'll tell you, we're going to talk about woke culture some later on this morning. This uh, news out of ECU this morning is very disturbing. I'm not going to um, I'm not going to glaze over it. We're going to talk about it here in a minute, so stand by for that. Yeah. A lot of people waiting to yeah. hear what I'm going to say about that this morning, and I've got something to say. The, uh, the thing with Don Lemon, uh, he was talking to the hurricane director from NOAA yesterday. Jamie Rome, the acting director of the NOAA Hurricane Center, and he kept trying to get him to admit that this hurricane is intensifying and it's really bad because of climate change. And, you know, twice, the hurricane director's like, I don't want to talk, you know, let's focus on the hurricane, let's not talk about climate yeah. change. But, you right. know, Don Lemon can't do that. He has to come back to it again. And so, you know, the, the, the hurricane director kind of sets him straight. Roll that, Michael another period of rapid intensification. Can you tell us what this is and what effect climate change has on this phenomenon? Well, we can come back and talk about climate change uh, at a later time. I want to focus on the here and now. We think the rapid intensification is probably almost done. There could be a little bit more intensification as it's still over the warm waters of the uh, eastern Gulf of Mexico, but I don't think we're going to get any more rapid intensification. If you look here, you can actually see, pretty interesting for your viewers, you can actually see a second eye wall forming around the inner eye wall, and that's basically the second eye wall has overtaken the original eye wall, and that should arrest development. Uh, so listen, I just, I'm just trying to get that you said you want to talk about climate change, but what, what effect does climate change have on this phenomenon that that is happening now because it seems these storms are intensifying that's the question here. i don't think you can link climate change to any one event okay. on the whole <laughs> on the cumulative uh, climate change uh, may be making storms worse uh, but uh, to link it to any one event um, 
I, I would caution against that. Okay. Well, they, uh, listen, I grew up there, and these storms are intensifying. Something is causing them to in intensify. Listen, I know more than you do. You're the hurricane director, but listen, right. I'm Don right. Lemon. I'm, a, I'm, You're I'm, the I'm Don yeah. Lemon. I know more Jeez. than you do. This is climate right. change. A moron. I mean, he is. No wonder they're demoting him off prime time. I mean, he's he's just so so. I mean, he's dumb. It's not anything. Well, I mean, he's dumb. Never how mind his idea. That press secretary we got. I mean, did you see? Well, uh, we'll get to I that. Mean, it, ideology aside. He's just not an intelligent individual. And, and Let me I mean, tell you who's not sad. dumb is Ron DeSantis. He he was get you know the reporters in the media room yesterday. If you watched any of this, the they were coming after him. You know, uh, Florida was not prepared for this. Um, and uh, oh you know, what, what role do you feel uh, the the state government? Uh, why were you guys not ready for this and all that? And here's what Ron Santos had to say back. FEMA Administrator Chris Wells said today that she acknowledged concerns that of Florida's, as it was said, lacks response to the storm so far, and that whoa, some whoa, 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 whoa! Give me a break. That is nonsense. Stop politicizing, okay? Stop it. We declared a state of emergency when this thing wasn't even formed. We've had people in here. You've had counties doing. Uh, they've done a lot of hard work, and and honestly, you're trying to attack me. I get, but like you're attacking these other people who've worked very hard, and so so that's just totally false. Um, I don't think we've ever, certainly since I've been governor, declared a state of emergency this early. Uh, we made sure that we were very inclusive with it. We said that there was a lot of uncertainty, and and we've worked to make sure um, the preparations that have been done and all the the stuff. You talk to the people at the counties when they've needed something stuff gets there very quickly because of what kevin and his team have done whoa 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 whoa! give me a break i want that guy to be my president he was good he's good he he's, will be eventually uh, he's got a little chris christie in him without the uh extra no 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 don't actually, put that extra, on him without the extra milky ways <laughs> don't don't put chris christie on him that's well he's that's better, a low point he's better than chris christie he he, he could run laps around him literally and figuratively. <laughs> so we got the first openly transgender army officer indicted for trying to give soldiers medical information to Russia. I can't quite understand what this person was trying to do, but I'm looking at a mm. picture of this man wearing these uh, diamond earrings with a big Adam's apple. <laughs> Thank your pardon. Reading from the Washington Free Beacon, the Army's first openly transgender officer indicted Thursday on charges of trying to provide American soldiers medical information to the Russian government. Federal grand jury in Baltimore indicted Jamie Lee Henry and his wife, Anna Gabrian, on charges of conspiracy and wrongful disclosure of individually identifying health information. According to prosecutors, the couple met last month with an undercover FBI agent posing as a Russian diplomat and offered medical information from Fort Bragg, the home of the military's elite Delta Force. What, what good would it do for the Russians to have medical information about the Delta Force out of Fort Bragg? I don't really mm -hmm. understand that. Mm. But, I mean, you know, jeez. And this, this photograph of this guy dressed as a woman is just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. The woke culture is everywhere, folks. And I got to tell you, you know, there's this, uh, there's this blog going around about the ECU School of Medicine uh, participating in some sort of a program to uh, offer uh, uh, transgender surgery to people under the age of 18. And some quotes in there from some a doctor from the Brody School of Medicine, and I, and I hope he's listening to me, okay, because here's what I want to say to him. And, and let, me, let me say this first. We, we already know that some of that article is not accurate, I don't know the the lady that wrote it is uh, is a big conservative blogger out of uh, Raleigh, Sloan Rathmuth, I believe is her name. I actually was trying to contact her yesterday, to see if I could find. If anybody knows how to get up with her, let me know. Uh, she some of that article is absolutely incorrect, because in it she says that that the board of trustees at ECU has approved this thing. And that is absolutely 100% false. In fact, I first got that article. I've been sent that article a hundred times, seriously. And, and, uh, people are like, Hey, is this really happening at the school of medicine at ECU? And I, I, when I first got it, I was actually standing next to Scott Shook, the chairman of the trustees board. And he knows nothing about this. 
So her assertion that if if this is really going on, that the Board of Trustees has approved it is 100% false. I also was told yesterday that upper-level administration of the university doesn't know about this. I don't. I can't confirm that yet, but we're working on it. But here's what I would say to anybody who would create any kind of trans, you know, work toward recruitment of trans of, of transgender surgery of minors. There are so many people, yours, clu- yours truly included, who have worked forever to keep funding into that Brody School of Medicine. Anything you do to harm it, you are going to be our enemy. <laughs> I'm just going to say that right now. Anything that is done to harm the, the reputation of this school, of, this school of medicine at ECU is the crown jewel of Eastern North Carolina. It's the crown jewel of our economy. It's the crown jewel of our university and our pride. We don't have a lot to hang our hat on here in Eastern North Carolina. And that school of medicine and the medical industry here in Greenville is it. So if you do anything to damage it, you better watch out because we're coming after you, and you better believe that. That's all I'm going to say for now. We're still working on it. But I promise you, if there's any truth to some of what was written in that article, there's about to be some issues here in Greenville. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Um, I hope it's not true. Um, I, 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 it's, it's making, it, it literally affected me to the point I couldn't sleep last night. It's making me so sad. I'm not mad. I'm sad because I can't believe that the, you know, we've kept the woke culture at bay to some degree. I mean, there's all, I get stuff every day from college professors on the inside who don't want to be identified with sending me all stuff. I mean, this woke culture that is an infiltrating universities everywhere. And now it's happening here. And we have to fight this woke culture, folks. We have to fight the woke culture. Do not acquiesce to this woke belief system because it's, in many cases, it's corrupt and it's sickening. And doing transgender surgery on children is sickening. I don't care who you are. And, you know, it, and of course, it's become wrong to say things like this, but... You know, we have to speak the truth. We have to speak the truth about these things. And and that's just where, that's where I am on it this morning. 733, 27 in front of 8. And uh, so the line's in the sand there, PJ. Maybe w- this would be a good point to uh, go straight to uh, sports. What do you think? Sports. Yeah. Sports. So the football team's leaving at 130 <laughs> today. That's the word, yeah. One thirty today. So I guess they're going to have to fly, you know, a significant uh, longer path to get to uh, the uh, South Florida. The proverbial right? elbow to get to your thumb yeah. reference comes to mind. But, I mean, yeah. what can you do? Yeah. You have to do that. True that. All right, let's check, uh, let's check our sports update and pirate report. Here's PJ. Well, we'll certainly be uh, passing along our uh, prayers and uh, good vibes to the uh, team as they they uh, fly out, undoubtedly. Uh, but East Carolina will depart this afternoon for their rematch, or their matchup, I should say, uh, that's scheduled tomorrow at 2.30 in Boca Raton against South Florida. The game was moved from Tampa as Hurricane Ian originally had that city in its sights. Coach Houston, when asked about the travel plans for the Pirates. I would plan to leave uh, normal time Friday afternoon. Uh, we got an advanced team going down uh, tomorrow to make sure everything's ready at the hotel down there, but uh, just normal normal travel plans on Friday. Been in communication with the air, 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 airlines, and uh, they expect us to have a smooth trip now. Coverage begins of ECU and USF tomorrow at 11 a.m. on 94.3 The Game and 94.3thegame.com. Pirates are a nine-point favorite on the road at uh, Boca Raton against South Florida for entertainment purposes only. Number 10, NC State is on the road. Take it on fifth-ranked Clemson. Uh, that will be uh, one of the uh, key matchups in college football uh, tomorrow. We've also got uh, 21st-ranked Wake Forest traveling to Tallahassee to take on number 22, Florida State. 3-1 and one Blue Devils host 2-2 two and two Virginia and Durham. 
The Tar Heels are also 3-1 and one and are welcoming Virginia Tech into Chapel Hill. Christian McCaffrey's status is uncertain heading into the Panthers' Week 4 matchup against the Cardinals. The star running back is out or sat out of practice for a second straight day yesterday as he deals with a quad injury. Offensive coordinator Ben McAdoo says he'll be ready for the game with or without McCaffrey. I guess McAdoo says he'll be ready. Uh, the Panthers host uh, Arizona on Sunday afternoon. Both teams are one and two. Meanwhile, Baker Mayfield continues to struggle with his accuracy, completing just under 52% of his passes on the season. Matt Rule still believes in Baker. Baker's an alpha, and he's a winner, and he's a competitor. And and um, um, I think the more more reps we have, the guys kind of being around each other, I think the better and better and better they're going to be. So as you've heard me talk about the passing game, it's, it's everybody. It's not never on one guy. It's a 4 o'clock kick, and we will have coverage Sunday on 1037 WTIB. Big Hen next hour, we'll run through some of the high school football scores from uh, last night in sports as well. But right now we send it back to you. All right, 736. It's 24 minutes in front of 8 o'clock. Our Pirate Report and Sports Update brought to you by Ace Hardware in Greenville. They are about to be one year old. Next week is their birthday. So to celebrate one year in Greenville, Ace Hardware is giving you the presents during their customer appreciation event event uh, next weekend. It's going to be uh, October 8th and 9th. Come to Ace Hardware at the corner of Charles and Fire Tower. You're going to get 10% off everything in the store, excluding power tools. You heard it right. 10% off everything all weekend next weekend, October 8th and 9th at Ace Hardware. So uh, they got the Pauly's Island Furniture. They got uh, they got the all the grills, the Weber grills, and uh, everything. All those grill got all the great grill selections, and all that's going to be on sale next weekend. So if you've been thinking about buying a grill, uh, or you know some for, uh, Pauly's Island or whatever, come on out uh, to Ace Hardware. And by the way, if you need anything for the house to prepare for the storm, boarding up stuff and stuff, and uh, you need some hammer and nails and all that kind of stuff, Ace Hardware in Greenville can take care of you. Seven thirty-seven, twenty-three minutes in front of eight o'clock. Today is the last day of September. <laughs> It's over. What? It's over. It is over. Is that it? That's it. We're on location today at Fabric and Home Furnishings, Arlington Village on Arlington Boulevard here in Greenville, one of my favorite places in town, one of my favorite people in town. My buddy Lisa Pendry is here. And Lisa, when I walked in this morning, the place always looks great, but there's something new here. You got a brand new room. Tell us what's going on. We do, Henry. We are opening a Norwalk Gallery, and we are so excited because this company is so custom. Been in business since 1902, built in Norwalk, Ohio. Tons of wood colors to choose from, over 900 fabric choices, and I've got a design team that can make it fabulous and help you find unique styles. So when you say custom, a custom furniture line, what does that mean exactly? You can literally choose the cushion, the fabric. You can even choose the thread color with this company. So wood choices, amazing fabric, put three fabrics on one sofa, as much fun as you want to have. And that's what people want these days. They want it to be exactly the way they want it, so you can get that with Norwalk. You yet. can. All right, what else is new? You've always got some other interesting things going yeah. on here. Well, we have some new fabrics that have arrived, but I've also, in this new showroom, I've added a friend of mine that's opened a company in Hickory, North Carolina, called Hickory Lux. Done business with him for a long time, but we're adding to that because he can deliver in six to eight weeks instead of eight months, like some of these companies are you know, doing right now. And as we always say, Fabric and Home Furnishings is a furniture store and so much more. And the so much more is you guys offer design services. I know you're a designer yourself. You have a design team here, so you can offer that full service for people. I do. I've got the best design team ever. We do commercial design and residential. And there's a lot of decisions that go into what you want your home to be. So we send somebody right out to the house for a flat one-time fee, not an hourly fee. And we analyze it, make a friend, and make it easy and painless and fabulous for people. 
Fabric and Home Furnishings here in Arlington Village. My friend Lisa Pendry. It's a furniture store and so much more. Come see them. Kind of a show you guys putting on here today. This is Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. If I were the man I was five years ago, I'd take a flamethrower to this place. Talk 96.3 and 103.7. We're going to have to get out of flamethrower, I think. <laughs> 741. It is uh, 19 in front of 8 o'clock. Welcome back to uh, Talk of the Town this morning. Brought to you in part by our Henry's List. A list of professional businesses offering services and goods across eastern North Carolina in our listening area that advertise on our radio station. Go to Henry's List. You can find it online at WTIBFM.com. Need windows? We've got a listing there for the window source. Need awnings? we got a listing for Greenville Awning and Canopy. Need a haircut? we got a listing for uh, Fantastic Sam's. Need a deck or a roofing or uh, fencing? Got a lift listing there for Specialty FDR and how you can contact them. For real estate down on the uh, Pamlico River and around Washington, we got the Rich Company on here. We got Tire Realty Group here in Greenville. We have the Brothers that Brothers that Just Do Gutters, the Air Doctor, Pitt County K9 Academy, Fabric and Home Furnishings, our buddy uh, Lisa and Dale Pendry, also uh, full service flooring if you need flooring. Tim Tyson's Crowd, Beauty Bar Medi Spa, Hardy Appliance and Furniture, Spain Telecom, and it goes on and on. Uh, and, the, and, of course, our friends at Scotland Neck Heart Pine. So go to WTIBFM.com and you'll find Henry's List. There it is. Back with the program this morning, Patrick Johnson joins me here this morning. Patrick. Um, Good morning, Big Hen. There's a new poll out this morning on the Beasley Bud Race. Uh, Civitas has now uh, released a poll. Remember, we had a poll two weeks ago from the ECU poll that showed that uh, Ted Budd was losing ground to to uh, Sherry Beasley. Uh, it, it, he was seven points up in May. He was three points up in the ECU poll two weeks ago. Now, Civitas shows that this is now a dead heat Sherry mm. Beasley and Bud, dead heat, uh, 44% for Beasley, 43.7 for Bud. So essentially 44-44. Um, so that means about 10% of the electorate remains undecided. Um, the good news is in this Civitas poll, Republican candidates for North Carolina Supreme Court have a comfortable lead right now with their Democrat opponents. That could change. And I don't know if you saw this, but it looks like the Club for Growth is now weighing in. The uh, the big uh, the big pack super pack that uh, spent all the money promoting uh, Ted Budd in the primary they are coming in and I saw the first ad this morning a friend of mine uh, in politics in Raleigh sent me the first ad that's being released by the Club for Growth that you're going to start seeing on television and, uh, an attack ad on Sherry Beasley and let me tell you it's about to get nasty <laughs> it's mm. about to get nasty up in here. The club for growth has taken off the gloves. This race is too close, and um, they're going to do what they can to try to put. And you know what? I'm a, it, if if it helps him win, had Ted Bud win, I don't. I just don't want him to lie. That's all. I would just say don't lie. Now they're focused. They're going to be focused on Sherry Beasley's record as an attorney and a and a and a judge. And you're going to see some really hard hitting, very. Um, very nasty ads coming out from the club for growth to against a Sherry Beasley. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. But the um, first poll from the Civitas, and I hope they polled likely voters, because if you don't poll likely voters, then you know you're you're, you're polling people that that don't matter. If you're not going right. to vote, yeah. So the split between Democrats and Republicans on the generic legislative ballot 
is narrowing compared to what Civitas did in August, while the generic bad for congressional offices remains largely unchanged. Uh, the GOP maintained a 46.6 to 44.5 edge over Democrats on the legislative generic ballot. So uh, Democrats by a uh, 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 on the congressional ballot, Republicans, again, this is just asking would you vote for a Republican or a Democrat if you were voting for someone in Congress. Uh, 47.5% Republican, 44.2% said Democrat. So, uh, you know, red wave, I don't know. Red wave, I don't know. And I'll tell you, the, the other interesting thing here is this Green Party candidate, this guy Matthew Ho, remember we had him on the air? Mm hmm. He gets 0.6%, six tenths of 1%. In this in this Civitas poll, you know, if he, if this guy gets one percent of the vote, that could sway this race to Ted Budd. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah. Because there ain't yeah. no Republicans voting for a Green Party candidate. Mm -mm. But mm -mm. you know, some of the left wing wokers, right? The, the, you know, they're all into legalization of marijuana and um, the abortion issues and. What else was he talking about that day? He was he's he's out there a little bit. I mean, good guy. We like him, but I mean, politically, he's 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 way out there. But there's also a libertarian in the race that you don't hear anything about. This person, Shannon Bray. I don't even know if it's a man or woman. And in this uh, Civitas poll, he got 1.3 percent, mm. or they got 1.3. Let me use the proper pronoun. They got. They 1. may 3. identify as they. Head. You need to be it careful. Could be. That, well, it's yeah. a libertarian, probably not. Or maybe you never know uh, where libertarians are, and so the libertarian. Don't this, tell a libertarian what to do, Big Hen. Isn't that the point? Yeah, the libertarian <laughs> voters would probably hurt Ted Budd, though, wouldn't they? Uh, maybe. So you know, you got these two. You you got these two other candidates in this race: the libertarian and the Green Party candidate. And I'm telling you, man, if they get one percent of the vote, they could determine the outcome of this poll. Yeah. Of this race, rather. So the the great news in this poll is is the news on the rep on the Supreme Court. Uh, the um, Republicans are maintaining comfortable lead. Trey Allen with forty six percent over Sam Irvin, the incumbent, thirty seven percent. I'm sorry, thirty eight point nine percent. And the Republican Richard Dietz has forty four point five percent to Democrat Lucy Inman's. 40.5 percent i donated to both those republicans i look if there's one race you want to donate to in this cycle if you want to see the balance of power in north carolina change we need republicans elected on that supreme court so i'm just telling you trey allen you, they're not names that you would know but trey allen and richard Dietz are the two republicans and i've met them both they're both very conservative, and I think they'll both be good, very, very good justices. And right now, according to the Civitas poll, they're leading their opponents, the Democrat opponents, in a pretty good way. Democrats, of course, have a 4-3 to three majority on the uh, Supreme Court. If Republicans win both races, they would then Republicans would then have a 5-2 to two majority. And you've seen what's happened in North Carolina with this Supreme Court. This Supreme Court is in collusion with Roy Cooper. They're in collusion with, you know, the attorney general. Um, you know, I, by the way, I heard those comments on the North Carolina network from the attorney general. What's his name? Stein? Josh Stein? Josh Stein, Nothing yes. Nothing he says now has any credibility since we know he's gone to the court system to try to save his own skin because he's getting sued by the, his opponent in the 2020 race, and he keeps losing in the courts because he's guilty. <laughs> He's guilty of having run these uh, lies in these campaign ads. You know, I, I, you got to hand it to that district attorney over there in Forsyth County that sued him because he had the guts to actually use the court system to go after the attorney general. But, you know, most of the people, after they lose a race, even if there's if lies been told about them, they just say, well, it's over. I'm moving on with my life. But, you know, it, it's, it's the principle of the thing. People need to stand up for what's right. 
So this guy, Jim, what's the guy's name that was the Republican Forsyth, Forsyth County? Jim something. Can't, can't, can't pull it up in my brain right now. He's suing Josh Stein. So when Josh Stein gets out there and so says, watch out for price gouging and all that, I'm like, oh, shut up. Seriously? <laughs> Nobody wants to hear what you got to say. Ten minutes in front of eight. Be right back. We're on location today at Fabric and Home Furnishings, Arlington Village on Arlington Boulevard here in Greenville, one of my favorite places in town, one of my favorite people in town. My buddy Lisa Pendry is here. And Lisa, when I walked in this morning, the place always looks great, but there's something new here. you got a brand new room. Tell us what's going on. We do, Henry. We are opening a Norwalk Gallery, and we are so excited because this company is so custom. Been in business since 1902, built in Norwalk, Ohio. Tons of wood colors to choose from, over 900 fabric choices, and I've got a design team that can make it fabulous and help you find unique styles. So when you say custom, a custom furniture line, what does that mean exactly? You can literally choose the cushion, the fabric, you can even choose the thread color with this company. So wood choices, amazing fabrics, put three fabrics on one sofa, as much fun as you want to have. And that's what people want these days. They want it to be exactly the way they want it, so you can get that with Norwalk. You can. All right, what else is new? You've always got some other interesting things going yeah. on here. Well, we have some new fabrics that have arrived, but I've also, in this new showroom, I've added a friend of mine that's opened a company in Hickory, North Carolina, called Hickory Lux. Done business with him for a long time, so we're adding to that because he can deliver in six to eight weeks instead of eight months, like some of these companies are you know, doing right now. And as we always say, Fabric and Home Furnishings is a furniture store and so much more. And the so much more is you guys offer design services. I know you're a designer yourself. You have a design team here, so you can offer that full service for people. I do. I've got the best design team ever. We do commercial design and residential. And there's a lot of decisions that go into what you want your home to be. So we send somebody right out to the house for a flat one-time fee, not an hourly fee. And we analyze it, make a friend, and make it easy and painless and fabulous for people. Fabric and home furnishings here in Arlington Village. My friend Lisa Pendry. It's a furniture store and so much more. Come see them. By the way, Tom Lamprey just texted me and said Ted Bud's coming on his afternoon show here on the station uh, October the 12th. Still no uh, response to my invitation for Ted Bud to come on, so I guess he's not not going to do Not going to do So that's two to nothing, Tom. Well. But who's keeping score? You don't want to get me started on that no, again. No, I morning. don't. I'm not going to do it. Why would he not want to be on the North Carolina radio station? Of the I don't year? know. It doesn't make any sense, does it? Yes, it does. <laughs> We got football tomorrow. Our coverage of uh, ECU and you uh, at University of South Florida begin. What time are you going to be on tomorrow with uh, our Pirate Game Day countdown? Um, oh, Patrick just walked away again and didn't tell anybody. The game is at two thirty. I believe I heard Patrick say that we're going to start our coverage tomorrow morning at nine with our award-winning Bush Light Pirate Game Day countdown. So. Uh, Pa uh, Patrick, are you back? Yeah, I thought you were going to the joke, so I was trying to take a break. Well, Lord knows you need a break. What time is the pregame you know show I need? starting tomorrow? A solid eight hours of sleep. I can't is, seem to get that uh, now. Uh, what are you asking me? 
this is this is a continuing theme that you're way too busy and you've got too much to do. And uh, please, what I'm what time are you busy. doing the pregame show tomorrow? What time? I'm it like start? Ted Budd when it comes to do a debate. I'm very busy, very busy, <laughs> very busy when it comes to a debate. I'm like, what Ted time Budd. is the pregame show tomorrow for crying out loud? Pirate game day countdown begins on 94.3 The Game and 94.3 The Game dot com at 11. Pirate game day countdown for Bush Light begins at 11:30. What is starting at 11? We just have a little lead in, so okay. we're not starting in the middle of uh, programming. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm the last That's all. Enough. All right, now we got the laugh track. <laughs> Nate Bargartz, the Tennessee comedian. Here we go. Went to college in the South, nice community college. Went there for one year, and I don't have one credit to show for it. Yeah. <laughs> it would be better just not to go than what I did. My loan was like 40 bucks. Uh, <laughs> We paid cash. Took a couple of years, but it's, it's paid off. And the reason none of my classes counted is I had to take remedial classes, which remedial classes basically mean they're like, look, we have no idea how your high school let you leave, all right? <laughs> We're shocked about it. We're going to look into it. But until then, here are some classes that you can take. Like, I had a, I, here's what I took. I took uh, math as a class. Like, yeah, like literally the book I bought said math. <laughs> yeah. I took reading as well. You know what that's like? I've driven to a reading class. Not even an immigrant. I'm from here. Should have knocked that out years ago. <laughs> <laughs> reading, they're just impressed you make it to the class. They're just like, hey, look who made it today, buddy. You're like, you guys. All right, Nate Bargars, we'll be back after the news. Hey, we're at Marabella's in Greenville, the new location of Marabella's on Fire Tower Road. If you haven't been to this place yet, let me tell you, you are missing out. I want to introduce my friends from Marabella's. I've got Sal, Massimo, and Pietro here. These guys are awesome. Not only do they make great food, they do a lot of things for the community, which we're going to be talking about. But, Sal, let's start with you. Let's talk yes. about the new location of Marabella's on Fire Tower Road. I'm a regular here. I love it. You guys call it Old World Pizza. Tell us what's different about your pizza. Well, we got uh, we got two kinds of pizzas. We have the, the traditional, you know, American style, and then we have the Old World Pizza, which is made with uh, fresh mozzarella and, you know, the way they do it in, in uh, Italy. Massimo, when you talk about doing this food right, it's authentic. And when I talk about authentic, you grew up in Italy, so you grew up with this food. You know how to make it. Yeah, we, we, because we grew up in Italy, we know the ingredient, and, and everything we do, we do from scratch. And the right ingredient is it's been hard for us to bring over here. And now finally we can get a, the right ingredient to make a right pizza. All right, now I'm going to talk to my friend Pietro here at Marabella's. He's got the Nino's shirt on today. We're going to talk about Nino's, which is another great dining experience, upscale dining experience, on another segment upcoming. But uh, Pietro, let's talk about Marabella's. For people who have never been to Marabella's, what's the experience going to be like when they come here? Not only pizzas, but pastas, salads, sandwiches, you got it all. Yes, uh, we do. We, we have new sandwiches that we put in in this new location and we're going to spread it to the other locations. The guys here at Marabella's have won national pizza competition, so you know it's good. Thanks to Sal, Massimo, and Pietro. Folks, do yourself a favor. Come to the new Marabella's here on Fire Tower Road in Greenville or Marabella's on Greenville Boulevard or Marabella's in Washington on Carolina Avenue. Also, don't forget upscale dining at Nino's on Red Banks Road. Empty lots at car dealers everywhere, except here. The selection you want is at Greenville Nissan. And during the Nissan Thrill of the Drive sales event, buy a new Nissan with financing as low as 0.9%. The versatile Nissan Rogue, the all-new Pathfinder, or gas-saving cars like Nissan Sentra and Altima. And yes, we have trucks. Buy the new Nissan Titan with 0.9% financing or the all-new Frontier for $99 a month. Hurry to Greenville Nissan, where we drive to serve. This is about you, your family, and the health of all who live in Eastern North Carolina. This is about the transformation of a health system into something more powerful and more human, about creating new ways to treat disease and keep you well. This is about ECU Health, which is to say, it's really all about you. ECU Health, minds 
Hearts. Purpose.
It's almost better than your first cup of coffee. Ah, coffee. Almost. Welcome in to Talk of the Town. Starting your workday off the right way with the news and information you have missed, plus the laughs and fun that come along with Talk of the Town. This is going to be so much fun! On Talk 96.3 and 103.7. Now, two guys you wouldn't want to be stuck in an elevator with, Henry Hinton and Patrick Johnson. Okay, welcome back. Hour two of Talk of the Town, five after eight o'clock. Uh, I'm looking at the uh, radar right now, and it's raining all over eastern North Carolina. And uh, there's some power outages in uh, different areas. And uh, the track of uh, Hurricane Ian, uh, well, the center of the storm track continues to be on a track that will come ashore at Charleston later this morning and uh, then head straight toward the... Um, area of charlotte so um we are going to continue on with that uh it's a football weekend ecu at uh, south florida tomorrow of course that game's been moved to boca raton uh, the uh, the team will leave on a charter flight today at 1 30 and they'll take a little interesting route around the storm and then head to south florida for the game in boca raton tomorrow 2 30 we will be on the air with our coverage on 94 3 the game at 11 a.m with our uh, Bush Light Pirate Game Day countdown at 11:30, and of course uh, the game will air uh, with a pregame show from the uh, Pirate Sports Network at 1:30 on 107.9 and on 94.3. The game, uh, game will be on TV on ESPN Plus. So that is the uh, schedule for tomorrow, and uh, everybody's focused on the storm, and it's not. It's a little bit hard to kind of focus on football right now. Congressman Greg Murphy is joining me this morning by phone. Congressman, I uh, hope wherever you are, you're safe. Are you in Greenville or are you uh, in the swamp this morning? Uh, we're still up in D.C. today with boats, but uh, I'll be driving back sometime today, so I'm going to be driving my truck through the storm. Yeah, so. be careful. Be yeah. careful. Already yeah, we'll standing, right. already standing water. Yeah, I know there's a big vote coming today because you got to you got to do the continuing resolution on the uh, budget. But first, let, let's focus on the storm a little bit. Uh, District 3, your district, is going to have some significant effects. We're going to have some flooding, according to the National Weather Service. Uh, yeah. There's going to be a lot of rain, and uh, I know you uh, you are concerned about your constituents and everyone's well-being this morning. Well, we'll be in touch with FEMA, and we'll be putting stuff on our website for uh, resources as people go through. You know, the people of eastern North Carolina are not new to storms. However, however... You know, Henry, we've had since uh, 2020 more than 60,000 people move to eastern North Carolina, most of whom from either New England. There have been some folks from Oregon, California, you know, St. Louis and those things. And so they're new to this. And so we hope that they take these things seriously, um, stay out of harm's way, do not drive in standing water. That's one of the biggest things I think that, that sadly enough uh, leads to loss of life. And um, but we in eastern North Carolina, weather these storms, get through them uh, by pulling together and um, helping each other out. So we just have to weather the storm. We just also just have to um, empathize with the poor folks in uh, west, midwestern uh, Florida who uh, just had a devastating, um, devastating storm come through them and will take uh, a very, very long time to recover from that. So. Just uh, we take it for we don't uh, take anything uh, for granted here, and we uh, you know have to just be safe. Well, we're hoping and praying for everybody's safety uh, all along the uh, eastern seaboard today, and uh, I share your thoughts about those poor folks in uh, Florida. Boy, what a mess down there! Uh, let's talk politics a little bit. Senate passed uh, a bill yesterday to uh, keep the government open to avert a government shutdown, and. Um, now it goes to the House for a vote today. You you have to pass it uh, in the House today. Uh, and I assume, from what I'm told, I'm hearing that the votes are going to be there to pass it. Is that correct? Well, I think uh, there won't. mine won't be there. I just think this is really an irresponsible way to run government. And, you know, if you look at what Biden has done since, the, uh, since he's been in office, um, our deficit has exploded. Yes, some of that had to do with the initial COVID funding from Trump, but the continuing explosion of absolute insane spending um, is uh, is contributing to uh, to our deficit. And uh, you know, the CBS score finally came out on the student loan debacle. Um, and I'm never going to say student loan forgiveness, 
because it's not a forgiveness. It's just a transfer. It's a transfer to other people. But that's $400 billion as a conservative estimate for that. Some other estimates have it up at $800 billion, some close to a trillion dollars, adding to uh, debt. Fortunately, there now are some lawsuits against this. It's an, a- an absolutely unconstitutional order. And the only reason he thinks he has uh, legal standing is because he is continuing, continuing the public health emergency, um, which should have ended 10 months ago. Um, yes, people are still, sadly enough, dying from COVID. These are, but these are, it has become endemic now. We're not, no longer really in the pandemic phase. It's endemic, um, but it, this uh, nonsense of continuing the public health emergency for political expediency and political dictatorship needs to go away. It's absolutely wrong. Congressman Greg Murphy on the phone from Washington, D.C. The uh, House will vote this morning on the uh, re- resolution to avert a government shutdown. Uh, I noticed, in, I'm looking into what's in this bill, um, another $12.3 billion in assistance for Ukraine. I also saw that that uh, Biden had approved another $1.1 billion for Ukraine yesterday and saw a number of $16 billion that's been approved. Is that an addition to this $12 billion in this bill? Are we? Uh, I, I believe it is. I believe it is. So we're talking. And we're talking about twenty-seven billion dollars of ta- American taxpayer going to money going to Ukraine. I mean, and I and I, you know, I'm, I feel very uh, ambivalent about that. I'm not sure how to feel about that because I, right. I mean, without it, I think Russia is without us continuing to support Ukraine. Russia is going to own Ukraine, and it looks like they're finally beating them back. So, I, yeah, how do you feel about it? it? It's a hard thing. You know, I got a lot of uh, criticism for voting for the $40 billion, initial $40 billion aid to, quote, Ukraine. The, the, the point is, though, $24 billion of that was actually to replenish our own stores, the vast majority of which, remember, we left $80-plus billion worth of military equipment behind in Afghanistan. So we had to replenish our own stores. But what we've seen now is <clears throat> in Ukraine— which I'm sorry, and I'll, I'll, I'll go to my deathbed uh, believing this. I believe the Ukraine conflict started in Afghanistan when Putin saw how, how poor and how uh, weak this president and administration is, um, that he just turned to his generals to dust off that Ukrainian invasion plan because we can, we can march in. But this is, a, this is the tip of a spear, and I, I truly believe that if we don't support Ukraine, Putin will. Putin has no reason to not use nuclear weapons. He has nothing to lose. He literally has nothing to lose. And so it's a it's a dilemma, you know, because if we stop supporting Ukraine, Russia will roll right over. Uh, they have fighters. They are willing to do it. They have the know-how, the strategy to do it. They just don't have the uh, material resources. So it's going to be a, a you know a very de- hotly debated question as we move forward because this situation is not going away anytime soon. I got to ask you about this medical school blog that's out. Uh, I, I talked about this earlier this morning, and um, I've gotten this sent to me probably a hundred times. I've been, it's been sent to me several times since I've been on the air this morning. I guess people think I hadn't seen it yet, but I've known about this since uh, Wednesday night. Uh, and again, I want to preface what I said in the seven o'clock hour. This is a blog from somebody uh, from a conservative blogger named Sloan Rackmuth in um, in Raleigh. I do not know her. I know of her. I know she ran for school board in Wake County and uh, and she's a little bit of a bomb thrower with her. But but I agree with a lot of what she says on her blogs. I've read some of her stuff before, but she is alleging that the uh, Brody School of Medicine is partnering with uh, with with public schools to market a pediatric gender clinic. In other words, and, and by the way, there's a there, there's a uh, a doctor that works at the Brody School of Medicine, a 33 year old doctor, Colby Dendy, who is an assistant professor of pediatrics at ECU, quoted in this thing, basically saying that they that, that the Brody School of Medicine is going to offer uh, what they call gender identity care, which I have to believe means surgery on people under the age of 18 for for sex change operations 
at the Brody School of Medicine. Now, this is catching a lot of people by surprise, and I want to say that I know for a fact that uh, I want, and I'm, I'm leading to a question. I'm sorry, I'm I'm, uh, I'm I'm filibustering here, but but I want to make sure that I say this accurately. Uh, I know that part of this article is incorrect because it says that the board at ECU has approved this, and that is 100% false. I was actually with uh, Scott Shook when I first got this article, and he was as shocked to read this thing as I was. And I'm told that some of the upper-level administration at the university has been caught off guard with this. So we don't know if this is some assistant professor inside the School of Medicine, some 33-year-old brand-new doctor that's come in and decided they're going to do this gender clinic at Brody and then market it to uh, to, to high schoolers or even younger than that for sex change operations or whether it's just not true. We don't know the truth yet, so we're trying to get to it. But I w- I'll say what I said earlier this morning. So many, it, it is, it, that school of medicine is the, is the crown jewel of our university. It's the crown jewel of Eastern North Carolina. Health care in Eastern North Carolina is one of the only things we have to hang our hat on. You've been in the trenches on that. You were chief of uh, staff at, at Vidant. Uh, you've been involved in the medical community a long time. Now you're in politics. I'm sure you've seen this article. I just got to get your reaction to it this morning. Well, um, first of all, I hope it's not true. Uh, again, you know, verify, verify, verify. In the age of uh, in the age of the internet, anybody can say anything, and it goes like that. First of all, I hope it's not true. And you know, this is actually a, a specifically. Um, I, I'm a urologist. That's what I've been trained, and in some fields of urology. There are times where sex change operations occur, and it's interesting because two weekends ago I spoke with uh, three pediatric urologists because I was was trying to figure out what's truly going on, what is truly pushing this agenda. And this is what it is. It's an agenda, and it's pushing young individuals, sometimes five, six, seven. You look at some of the honest, and and I'll, I'll bleep myself, nonsense that goes on in some of these public schools about some of the literature some of the books that get, get in that talk about specific sexual acts, about am I a boy or a girl, you know, psychologically and in normal psychology, we know that at five, six, seven, there's a lot of what we call self-actualization. Kids trying, you know, children, children, not kids, children trying to figure out who they are. But then when you have parents or you have school teachers or you have some external source of authority pushing on them, that if Johnny plays with dolls when he's six, oh, you must really be identifying as a girl. And so this external force to really, in my opinion, uh, uh, create a, a psychology within these individuals that maybe they're misplaced. And then you add the medical community, which is supposed to be a scientific, uh, scientifically ambivalent um, field, which now has shifted left, shifted woke in so many different regards. There, we've lost our objectivity, um, and, and, and the American people have lost so much faith in medical institutions that you're pushing this on kids. How can you expect an 8-year-old, a 12-year-old, to make a decision about uh, whether they can have a sex change operation, which they're pushing in California, by the way. They're pushing to allow kids under age 18 to be able to sign permits without their parental consent on these things, while if they had a hernia repair, they'd have to have parental consent. But you're trying to push these kids to make life-altering decisions. If they're given hormone blockers, if they're given steroids, these, uh, these kids would be, uh, have their epiphyseal plates closed and so many of these different things. But it, it is an absolute abject um, scar upon the medical community that they are pushing this, this psychology on children. And so I hope this is not being done at this institution um, yes, there are kids that have this uh, gender dysphoria, uh, that they don't know who they are, and um, that has been known in medicine for decades. Uh, but to do life-altering surgery on someone before they're 20, 21, um, I personally believe it is malpractice. And so um, I just have to say that that's my personal belief as a physician and a urologist. Um, who uh, had worked in the past during my residency, not done any of that since then, in some of these um, particular issues. Well, I'll tell you, I I think what you just said is very profound. I think that, you know, um, 
I, I've talked about this on the air before. We we have had experience in our company with this. We had a young man who uh, had a sex change operation years ago, and he came to me, and we talked about it, and we spent a lot of time talking about it. I loved this guy. He was one of the best uh, radio guys I'd ever worked with, and he, you know, he had he had gender dysphoria. He he had. Uh, he told me that he had thought that he had, you know, he was supposed to have been a woman since he was a teenager, but, but he was in a, he was in his late twenties, I think, when he finally went through with the operation, and and I have great empathy for him. Uh, I, you know, I I really sure, I spent sure, a lot of time. I sure. mean, I understand, I I understand that 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 can be confusing and happen. I don't understand why. I don't think God makes mistakes, but uh, but you know, I do understand that it is happening. I I just. But, but we have so many uh, examples now of uh, of what you just talked about, of these kids that are having these sex change operations in their teens and even younger who, you know, when they grow up, they're like, oh, my God, I made the hu- this was a huge mistake. I mean, you can't make decisions like that when you're before you're 18 years old. You just can't. I mean, you know, you can't no. you can't make any rational. You can't, you, you can't think as a rational adult about most things until you become an adult, and and this is a decision that's going to affect them the rest of their lives and their families and everybody else. And you know, I just hope we have some young doctor off the reservation inside the organization that is is talking out of her head, and she has not, uh, and she well, has, no, she has know, not Henry, got me approval I recognize on this. this. I recognize this as a medical and psychological issue, without a doubt. These folks who have this uh, gender dysphoria, sadly enough, there's a, up to a 40 percent incidence of, uh, of su- attempting suicide. And that doesn't change with surgical intervention. OK, it doesn't change. It is a battle that these individuals have. And I'm, that's, I'm not discounting that at all. But what I'm saying is I have a disagreement with is for medical, um, is physicians or anybody else to interfere um, with a, uh, in a surgical way or even in a chemical way um, with, the, with these kids before they are true age of maturity and, and true age of uh, cognitive and neurological uh, maturity. All right. Well, we'll see what develops. I know there's a lot of discussion going on behind the scenes right now at ECU about this. As I said, I think, uh, you know, we're, we're, people are trying to get to the truth. And uh, it caught a lot of people off guard in the last 24 hours. But, uh, you know, people can stop sending me the article. I've seen it now a hundred times. <laughs> but, and, I, and I know that the whole community is up in arms about this. So I know that ECU is going to have to address it at some point. And, of course, yeah. you and I will be seen now as uh, insensitive. And, uh, and, and No, I'm not. And, I'm not, and, and I don't here's care. The deal. Let me just say it again. I'm not insensitive to this issue at all and because I have dealt with children with this. I've dealt with adults with this. I'm not insensitive to this issue at all. What I take issue with is that um, you're allowing individuals who are underage to make decisions that can have lifelong implication, and I think that is wrong. So, All right. I, uh, I think, Kate, told me you got a meeting, right? Have you got another couple of minutes? I had a couple of other things I wanted to throw out at you. Yeah, uh, yeah, I have a meeting. Uh, no, no, it's good. I got, I can do it. I can totally get it. So, I wanted uh, to ask you about uh, this new uh, commitment to America that Kevin McCarthy's come out uh, from the Congress. Yeah. Uh, this is this is kind of the uh, plan to take the majority in the House. Um, four different categories. Um, well, let me let, let me let you talk about it. Tell, what's this? Yeah, so, what's this know, all about? What's one, the purpose of it? One, some of the things that uh, Democrats love to say is that Republicans are just against things. They're not for anything. And sometimes, um, sometimes I think that's an accurate statement. And so what, uh, you know, this is a target-rich environment with this administration. If you look at the crime, if you look at the economy, the inflation, I mean, my God, our stock market has dropped $9 trillion um, since his administration has come in. If you look at the southern border, if you look at our stature on the national stage, if you look at the the energy crisis that they have called, the world takes its cue from the United States. And so what our commitment is, is to the American people that we're going to actually get the economy that's strong and is good for everybody. You know, the average American worker has lost over six thousand dollars in wages just due to inflation alone. Yes, they've gotten a raise, but actually their real wages have dropped close to 3%. 
And so this is because of the massive overspending um, and, and targets that have been ab abjectly wrong by this administration um, in their economic approach. Remember, over 60 percent of the folks in the Biden administration have zero, zero business experience. You know, the average is two years in their administration. The average was 13 plus years in the Trump administration. So we have to get the economy back on track. And yes, it's a worldwide issue, but the world takes its cues from the United States, but also a nation that's safe. You know, look at the uh, defund the police movement and what it's done uh, across the nation. There, there are record homicides. There are record violent crimes. Fortunately, we're in eastern North Carolina. We've been somewhat protected by this, but it's a commitment to, to make America safe again. And Democrats and Republicans can actually rally around that. But also, uh, you know, a future that's built on freedom. Parents have the right to have a say in what their kids are taught, period, point blank. I was on a I listened to a, 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 a podcast last night at Davidson College where they were arguing who had the right to teach kids, children about sex, gender and race. Was it parents or was it the school? I honestly can't even believe we're having that conversation. But it's the fact that we, we need to have freedom back for America. That's what makes America different. And finally, a government that's accountable. If you look at this administration, it has been not a good for thee, but not for, for, not for me. That's what this administration has done. You look at the defund the police movement. Corey Bush has spent over $200,000 in taxpayer money for her own personal security, but she's calling for defund the police. And it's just it, it's just absolutely an abject hypocrisy in this administration. Um, but we want accountability back. We win the House back. I'd love us to win the Senate back. And then in 2024, get the get the Republican presidency back and turn the country around to actually some sense of balance, balance. So we can have re actually respectful discussions about disagreeing issues. But this is what the Republican commitment to America is. And I think it's a very, very meaningful and thoroughly uh, crea crafted document. All right. I know you got to run to your meeting. Uh, I did want. I, I wanted to give you an opportunity to promote. You, you're going to do your water summit again. We did that last year here in Greenville at the Hilton, and uh, but this year I understand you're doing it down in Wilmington. Uh, yeah. week, week after next is it, and and might be very it's timely be a, based October on this. October 12th. Based on this hurricane you know, we've got coming now, maybe a good time to do it. Yeah, Eastern North Carolina, our congressional district actually has the second most uh, coastline in any district in the continental USA. We don't count you know, uh, Alaska, they're, they're their own country. But if you look at so much matters in Eastern North Carolina, so many rivers, you know, the Chihuahua, the Noose, um, the tar, everything. And, and if you look at all the water issues that we have and all the flooding issues that have occurred, I just felt it imperative that um, we bring together all the different constituencies, you know, the po folks in politics, government agencies, the private community, uh, Army Corps of Engineers, all these different folks together under Wonder Umbrella to start putting together a cohesive plan. We've got some uh, great leaders. John Bell's helped out in the House. Jim Perry's helped out in the Senate um, from North Carolina to try to bring it together. So last year, I think we had a very, very successful meeting. Great act folks from academia, from ECU and all the other major universities in the East and, uh, you know, even Duke and UNC um, to come together to try to speak some of these things. And so um, uh, it, it's really a good time, and so we're going to do it in Wilmington uh, this next year with David Rouser, but we'll bring it back up to ECU or to, to Greenville, rather, um, next year. So uh, All right, great. we're going to stream it live, and I think it'll be a very, very good thing for Eastern North Carolina. We'll talk more about that uh, after the hurricane's over. Congressman, great talking to you. Careful this morning when you leave Washington coming back. Road's already got uh, some standing water on it here in Greenville today, so it's going to be kind of tough tough sledding i'm afraid be be careful and drive slowly all right great all thank right. you thank you greg congressman greg murphy 829 be right back hey we're at marabella's in greenville the new location of marabella's on fire tower road if you haven't been to this place yet let me tell you you are missing out i want to introduce my friends from marabella's i've got sal massimo and pietro here these guys are awesome not only do they make great food they do a lot of things for the community which we're going to be talking about but sal Let's start with you. Let's talk yes. about the new location of Marabella's on Fire Tower Road. I'm a regular here. I love it. You guys call it Old World Pizza. Tell us what's different about your pizza. Well, we got uh, we got two kinds of pizzas. We have the, the traditional, you know, American style, and then we have the Old World Pizza, which is made with uh, fresh mozzarella, 
and you know the way they do it in, in uh, Italy. Massimo, when you talk about doing this food right, it's authentic. And when I talk about authentic, you grew up in Italy, so you grew up with this food. You know how to make it. Yeah, we, we, because we grew up in Italy, we know the ingredient, and, and everything we do, we do from scratch. And the right ingredient is it's been hard for us to bring over here. And now finally, we can get a, the right ingredient to make a right pizza. All right, now I'm going to talk to my friend Pietro here at Marabella's. He's got the Nino's shirt on today. We're going to talk about Nino's, which is another great dining experience, upscale dining experience, on another segment upcoming. But, uh, Pietro, let's talk about Marabella's. For people who have never been to Marabella's, what's the experience going to be like when they come here? Not only pizzas, but pastas, salads, sandwiches, you got it all. Yes, uh, we do. We, we have new sandwiches that we put in in this new location and we're going to spread it to the other locations. The guys here at Marabella's have won national pizza competition, so you know it's good. Thanks to Sal, Massimo, and Pietro. Folks, do yourself a favor. Come to the new Marabella's here on Fire Tower Road in Greenville or Marabella's on Greenville Boulevard or Marabella's in Washington on Carolina Avenue. Also, don't forget upscale dining at Nino's on Red Banks Road. Empty lots at car dealers everywhere, except here. The selection you want is at Greenville Nissan. And during the Nissan Thrill of the Drive sales event, buy a new Nissan with financing as low as 0.9%. The versatile Nissan Rogue, the all-new Pathfinder, or gas-saving cars like Nissan Sentra and Altima. And yes, we have trucks. Buy the new Nissan Titan with 0.9% financing or the all-new Frontier for $99 a month. Hurry to Greenville Nissan, where we drive to serve. This is about you, your family, and the health of all who live in Eastern North Carolina. This is about the transformation of a health system into something more powerful and more human, about creating new ways to treat disease and keep you well. This is about ECU Health, which is to say, it's really all about you. ECU Health, minds, hearts, Purpose. Talk of the town with Henry Hinton. Quiet numbskulls, I'm broadcasting. On Talk 96.3 and 103.7. All right, 8.32, thanks to uh, Congressman Greg Murphy for uh, being here. I've been craving a biscuit all week because I've done so well the last few weeks. I've been doing so well. And I just went out in the kitchen and cheese biscuits in the kitchen. I think these came from Lawrence Manning at CD's Grill. If somebody else brought them and left them, then I apologize. But I, but I saw Lawrence earlier this week, and I think he said he was going to deliver biscuits to the office this morning at, at on Friday morning. So thank you, Lawrence. If they came from you, and I think they did, they're awesome. Thank you very much. How is it, Michael? No, no, no. Michael stuck his head right in the bag when he went out there. <laughs> But I think these biscuits came from CD's Grill, which, by the way, uh, Lawrence is now serving dinner out at CD's Grill. Great place for lunch. I was out there earlier this week. Went out there to uh, just have salad on a salad bar and ended up seeing what everybody else was eating and had a scoop of chicken salad to go with it. Really good. Good stuff at CD's. All right, 833. I think Patrick is there. Patrick, come in, Berlin. Are you there? Yep. Let's uh, blaze through it because uh, it's a little shaky right now. All right, All right. tropical Here. storm warning in effect. Governor Cooper you're, is uh, urging people to avoid unnecessary travel as Ian impacts North Carolina. This storm can still be dangerous and even deadly. Heavy rains, up to seven inches in some areas, are likely to bring flooding. Landslides are a threat in our mountains, and there's a chance of tornadoes statewide. While North Carolina is ready to send more people to help in Florida, the governor says he wants to ensure that uh, the state is able to get through the storm first. Pitt, Lenore, Beaufort, and Greene County schools closed today. Craven, Washington, and Carteret are on a remote learning day. North Carolina state officials worried about price gouging. Attorney General Josh Stein warning residents to be on the lookout for scams, gouging, and charity fraud in the wake of Ian. Businesses are banned from unreasonably marking up items once a state of emergency goes in place, which was started this week by the Governor Stein says he wants anyone to report concerns of price gouging to his office. A fight that broke out at South Central High School Thursday among students has happened uh, shortly before an SRO used pepper spray to break it up. Police are reviewing camera footage to find out who exactly was involved. A Greenville man has been arrested and charged with insurance fraud, which is a felony. 
The insurance commissioner, Mike Causey, arrested, announcing the arrest, I should say, of 39-year-old Toronto Ruffin. Those crimes occurred in early June. North Carolina Highway Patrol in Onslow County investigating a crash where a motorcyclist was killed. The uh, trooper there says the accident happened just around 6 yesterday evening at the intersection of Piney Green Road and Rocky Run Road when a motorcycle and SUV collided. The uh, trooper investigating says the woman on the motorcycle, whose name's not been released, was killed while nobody in the SUV was injured, and that crash remains under investigation. All right, your news headlines for you on this Friday. We now send it back to the Big Hen. Wait a minute, I'm not finished with my biscuit. I I might get knocked off of any second, so this if you want to have this, this playful batter. This is in the studio. By the, uh, way, yeah. by the way, Brad Durrett brought these in. These did not come from oh. CD's Grill. Well, there you go. So, I, but I gave Lawrence a free plug anyway. That's all right. You did. Did Brad make them? No, he bought them at a. Um, he bought them somewhere. A, I think somewhere, somewhere else. Somewhere. Yeah. Mm. On the way in this morning, they're good. Well, they need to take out. A- <laughs> there he went. Boo! He was right to get knocked off at any minute. Did you knock him off, or did he knock himself off? Eight thirty-five. Let's do our uh, weather update now. Rob Martin with a hurricane Ian weather forecast for the weekend uh, rob a tropical storm warning is in place today breezy conditions early this morning turn outright windy into the afternoon wind gusts up to 40 to 50 miles an hour we'll also have a tornado threat by late morning into the early evening hours along with very heavy rain all the way into the nighttime hours this could persist into saturday morning from the storm team nine weather center i'm meteorologist rob martin for talk 96.3 and 103.7. Thank you, Rob. News and Weather Service this hour of QC Kinetics. Have you heard about QC Kinetics? What they're doing here in eastern North Carolina now is a pretty amazing. First or operation of its kind here in eastern North Carolina that uses advanced regenerative medicine for pain treatment. So if you've got shoulder pain, knee pain, back pain, these folks take care of you and, and work with your joint pain from injuries or arthritis without steroids, without pain medications, and the big news, without surgery. So a lot of times you go to the doctor with these, uh, and they tell you the only option is surgery. Well, you need to try QC Kinetics. At QC Kinetics, they use regenerative treatments from your own body that can restore and repair damaged tissue. Maybe you've been diagnosed with bone-on-bone arthritis or you've been told you need a replacement. Call QC Kinetics before you do it and, and, uh, and, and let them tell you about an alternative way to deal with your pain. These amazing protocols work with injuries uh, that, uh, of the knees and uh, your, maybe your shoulder, those kind of things. Um, they, they, uh, they say you don't have to live with this pain and you don't have to have surgery. Learn how regenerative medicine can help give you your life back at QC Kinetics. Write this number down, 252-765-PAIN. QC Kinetics, 252-765-PAIN. QC Kinetics, 252-765-PAIN. We'll be right back. We're on location today at Fabric and Home Furnishings, Arlington Village on Arlington Boulevard here in Greenville, one of my favorite places in town, one of my favorite people in town. My buddy Lisa Pendry is here. And Lisa, when I walked in this morning, the place always looks great, but there's something new here. you got a brand new room. Tell us what's going on. We do, Henry. We are opening a Norwalk Gallery, and we are so excited because this company is so custom. Been in business since 1902, built in Norwalk, Ohio. Tons of wood colors to choose from, over 900 fabric choices, and I've got a design team that can make it fabulous and help you find unique styles. So when you say custom, a custom furniture line, what does that mean exactly? You can literally choose the cushion, the fabric, you can even choose the thread color with this company. So wood choices, amazing fabrics, put three fabrics on one sofa, as much fun as you want to have. And that's what people want these days. They want it to be exactly the way they want it, so you can get that with Norwalk. You can. 
All right, what else is new? You've always got some other interesting things going yeah. on here. Well, we have some new fabrics that have arrived, but I've also, in this new showroom, I've added a friend of mine that's opened a company in Hickory, North Carolina called Hickory Lux. Done business with him for a long time, but we're adding to that because he can deliver in six to eight weeks instead of eight months like some of these companies are you know, doing right now. And as we always say, Fabric and Home Furnishings is a furniture store and so much more. And the so much more is you guys offer design services. I know you're a designer yourself. You have a design team here, so you can offer that full service for people. I do. I've got the best design team ever. We do commercial design and residential. And there's a lot of decisions that go into what you want your home to be. So we send somebody right out to the house for a flat one-time fee, not an hourly fee. And we analyze it, make a friend, and make it easy and painless and fabulous for people. Fabric and Home Furnishings here in Arlington Village. My friend Lisa Pendry. It's a furniture store and so much more. Come see them. Facebook now. Like us or watch the show. Find us at 1037 WTIB. Oh, yeah. Now back to the show with Henry Hinton. Well, the White House is uh, so good at um, misdirection and pivoting and uh, telling you not to believe your own lying eyes. I wonder what they're going to say. They're going to finally have to address this stock, stock market issue. Dow plunged again yesterday after having a great day on Wednesday. 550 points up on Wednesday, the Dow was. Yesterday, well, let's check our stock market numbers on the uh, Shook Rouse Group stock market report brought to you by Scott Shook and Thomas Rouse of Truist Investment Services here in Greenville. Dow was down 458 points yesterday, closing at 29,225. The NASDAQ was down 314, closing at 10,737, and the S&P 500 down 78 points yesterday, closing at 3640. Um, things are pretty flat right now on the futures for today. Dow is up 10, S&P is up 9, and the NASDAQ's up uh, 35. So maybe another rebound today. I don't know what would make it rebound with all this bad news and economic news and such, but... Uh, Nonetheless, it is um, it is what it is. So that's our stock market report brought to you by the Shook Rouse Group. Scott Shook, Thomas Rouse, Truest Investment Services here in Greenville. Contact him for all your investment advice needs. Uh, two restaurants in North Carolina have made the top 10 ranking in the United States for the top 10 restaurants. One of them's right here in eastern North Carolina. How about that? Can you guess which one it is? Can anybody tell me what restaurant made the top 10? I don't know if you've, and I haven't eaten at this place, PJ. I don't know if you have or not. First of all, the uh, restaurant at McDonald's. Gideon, get, no, it's not McDonald's. Oh. The restaurant at Gideon Ridge in Blowing Rock made the top 10. And the other one was on the Outer Banks, some of my old stomping grounds in Buxton, the Buxton Munch Company. And I, I was not familiar with them. I'm looking at their website right Don't now. Don't say that real fast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> their website says they've been there 23 years. Uh, it doesn't, you know, it, it does. It looks like it's in a strip center. It doesn't look like a fine dining kind of place, but it says best mm. fish, best fish tacos, best shrimp tacos, number one crabby patties, crab cakes. House rules are be nice, be happy, be patient, be mellow. We serve all fresh per order, high quality ingredients, and that takes some time. You cannot rush excellence. We are not, we repeat, not a fast food place. Oh, all so right. So please be patient. Shots fired. Exactly. Hey, Hen? Yes. Do you see where Amos Mosquitoes is going to be on, a, what is it, dive in, yeah, dives, yeah. drive ins, I and did. all that tonight? I did. For you folks, down I love in Amos the, Mosquitoes. Um, Atlantic Beach area. Um, Diners, drive-ins, and dives tonight at 9 o'clock. Was that on the Food Channel? 
I think it is. Yes, guy, not a hundred percent. Guy Fieri sure. was uh, seen. He was down there. Around, yeah, uh, the Outer Banks uh, at uh, Carteret County beaches a bunch this summer. He was also over at uh, Sanitary, yeah. shooting a segment. I don't know if that'll be he on was tonight, out the, but he was out in the mountains. He was uh, at a yeah. Hurricanes game in the playoffs. He was all over the place. So tonight, Amos Mosquitoes from Atlantic Beach will be featured on Guy Fieri's famous Food Network show, Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. Love their meatloaf. Yeah, it's good. I like you know I didn't it, it, I didn't get to Amos as much this year, but I, you know that's that's a good spot. Yeah, that's a good spot down on the coast. One of the few places in Atlantic Beach to eat, really. You know they've got so many down there that, that you talk about the the culinary scene exploding somewhere. Yeah, but most of them are in Moorhead and Beaufort now. You don't have yeah. much on the no. beach anymore. There's a few that's what down I, yeah. on the beach. Yeah, but I mean just in the whole kind of general airy. But that's pretty cool that uh, they're being featured tonight, and then this place down on Hatteras Island is being featured to, uh, in this uh, top ten in America. How about, how about that? And I'm well, uh, foodie Buxton Munch Company. I might have to drive down there and have lunch one again. Day. Don't say that quick. <laughs> I used to hang out in Buxton a bunch back in the day. Well, I, in high school, I had a little girlfriend down there. Ah, and uh, her daddy was a deputy sheriff of Dare County, and. Uh, <laughs> he ran me off the island a few times. I'll just say <laughs> that Joan County boy back down here again. How long Tell of him a he hike needs to was get that? off the island by 5 p.m. Huh? How long of a trek was that from Dog Bottom to Buxton? Hour and a half. Okay. No, probably two hours all the way down to Buxton. Oh, because there's no easy way to get to Buxton. You got to drive all the way down Hatteras Island. Yeah, it was two, yeah. probably two hours. Yeah. Look at you. Look at you, cook, cook, chook. You had them uh, you all over I, there. You know, I have end. tickets for the Panthers on Sunday, and I'm it, I'm aware gonna, it's going to be a game time decision. Oh, uh, you know, I'm assuming really? I'm assuming that the yeah because I'm I'm planning to stay Sunday night because the game's not it's a four o'clock game with the right, Cardinals. Right. Yeah. But I thought this was uh, a done deal that you were going. Well, I'm I'm planning to go. I got a hotel reservation. Uh, and I'm going to stay Sunday night, and you're going to do the show Monday unless the storm stalls and it doesn't get through. I'm not driving over there in a torrential downpour, I can tell you that much. Okay. But I think the rain's going to get on out by Saturday night out of Charlotte's, what I'm being told. But well, still, yeah, I, it appears. But I understand. So you I'm don't planning wanna... on, but, but I'll let you know, but I'm planning on being there. But, you know, look. And, and Give me now, a percentage. A percentage what? What would be your percentage I'd right say now, right now gonna... the percentage of me going is 80%. Okay. Oh, less than I thought. All right. Well, 85. Okay. <laughs> but now Christian McCaffrey's hurt again. Well, I was going to say, it's it's not could be it's not great. So McCaffrey has missed two straight practices. Did you see Baker Mayfield's comment? <laughs> no, I don't have that one. What is He's what did he Mayfield. say? Mayfield. Mayfield was asked yesterday after practice about Cap McCaffrey's status for Saturday, at, I mean Sunday, and he said, well, he's gone zero dark 30 on us. He's keeping us guessing. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Look, Mayfield is, might not be able to complete a pass, but he's got a zinger or two. I was going to say, is, is, is that is – that, uh, is, is that uh, an indication of the Mayfield-McCaffrey thing not – they're not Gian and Hawd, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> All right, we got to get a break in, and we'll do our pirate report and talk more sports. Stay with us. Get to Greenville Toyota, where our trade buyout is still going strong. We're still out to buy more trades, and we're still going to give you our best offer. Then use that cash to trade in for a new Toyota and get our Greenville advantage. Don't miss the trade buyout at Greenville Toyota. You know that moment when you realize your hair color is way past its prime? Or that you need a change and you hope it comes in the form of perfectly sun-kissed highlights? In a fantastic Sam's, we offer real salon services at real people prices. Our color specialists can do it all. They make grays disappear, layer in subtle highlights, or help you finally find that perfect shade of red. All for real reasonable prices.
Air Service is back at Pitt Greenville Airport offering safe, clean facilities and flights from American Airlines. That means the short commute, quicker lines, and better prices that get you where you're going fast and easy. See it for yourself. There's great things inside at Pitt Greenville Airport. The best burgers around. Everyone loves a thick, juicy, and fresh burger. Tiebreakers in Greenville, plus the all-new Tiebreakers in Winterville do real burgers better than anybody. So don't just go to any burger-themed restaurant chain. It's time to break the chain and eat local. Tiebreakers, real burgers at its best. Everybody loves burgers. Living easy is the sound of children laughing as you make memories with neighbors and friends. It's the sound of nothing at all. It's the smell of the salt air. Hear the waters against the marsh grass. See the beauty of our coast, Bow Coast. Located in Beaufort, North Carolina. Southern Living's best small town. Air Service is back at Pitt Greenville Airport offering safe, clean facilities and flights from American Airlines. That means the short commute, quicker lines, and better prices that get you where you're going fast and easy. See it for yourself. There's great things inside at Pitt Greenville Airport. The Greenville Toyota Advantage has just gotten even better with the new pre-order advantage. Simply pre-order the Toyota you want, then lock in today's rate or payment, and we'll honor it for 90 days. It's the pre-order advantage at Greenville Toyota. We're back. Well, I have a microphone, and you don't. Henry Hinton. So you will listen to every word I have to say! This is Talk of the Town on Talk 96.3 and 103.7. Time for our Pirate Report. we got football tomorrow here on uh, the Pirate Sports Network on our family of Interbanks Media Stations. Our Pirate Report this morning brought to you by Time Financing. If you need money fast, fast time financing is your personal loan specialist time financing has two dozen locations in north carolina here's pj all right big him thanks let's give a shout out let's start with football first place pirates that's right ecu soccer atop the league standings in the american after tying tulsa on the road last night so congrats to them east carolina will depart today for their matchup tomorrow in boca raton against south florida that game was moved from tampa earlier in the week coach houston when asked about the travel plans this storm uh, leave uh, normal time friday afternoon uh, we got an advanced team going down uh tomorrow to make sure everything's ready at the hotel down there but uh just normal normal travel plans on friday been in communication with the air 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 airlines and uh they expect us to have a smooth trip now. Coverage begins. ECU USF tomorrow at 11, 94.3 the game, 94.3 the game.com. Pirates say nine point favorite for entertainment purposes only. State Clemson, one of the big uh, matchups in the top 10. Wolfpack are 10th in the land. Tigers are fifth. Game from Death Valley on uh, Saturday. Number 21, Wake Forest travels to Tallahassee to take on 22nd ranked Florida State. Three and one Duke host two and two Virginia and Durham. Tar Heels are also three and one and are welcoming in Virginia Tech to Chapel Hill. Christian McCaffrey's status uncertain heading into the Panthers week four matchup against the Cardinals. He set out practice for a second straight day yesterday as he deals with a quad injury. Joe Burrow throwing for 287 yards and two touchdowns. Bengals beat the Dolphins 27 27- 15 on Thursday night football. NFL is not moving Sunday night's game in Tampa. The league announced that the Buccaneers and Chiefs will play at Raymond James Stadium as originally scheduled. High school football, a lot of games that were uh, set to be played on Thursday night that had been moved up originally from Friday, postponed to Monday. They include Dixon at West Carteret, Northside Pinetown at East Carteret, White Oak at Croatan, Conley hosting Havelock, which you can hear Monday on Groove and Oldies 94-1. We also have some scores from last night that include Bertie blanking South Creek, 36-0, Richlands 21, Swansboro 7, uh, Riverside over Perquimans, Green Central uh, with a big victory, 64-7 over Aiden Grifton, Farmville Central beats Washington, 45-12. It was uh, Tarboro 51, Gates County 8, Rose 33, Northside 13. You heard that on 94-3, the game. You heard it right here on 103.7 WTIB. Edenton runs past Pasquotank, 70-26. North Edgecombe 51, Northeast College 8, Southwest Edgecombe 41, North Pitt 28, Northeastern 67, Hertford County 39, Southside 21, Pamlico 8. It was Beargrass Charter topping Hobgood Charter 58-16, and then Rocky Mount with a 16-7 win 
over NAS Central. Quick shout out. Uh, I forget the lady's name, but I think she's the head of school with uh, Hobgood Charter or someone affiliated with the school. And originally we had it in our script as Hobgood Academy, but now they're Hobgood Charter. They used to spank us back in the day in eight-man football when I was a, a, a nose guard and goal line fullback for the Patriots. We got hammered by Hobgood every year, Big Ken. You know who had an interception this week for the Patriots? I saw it. He showed some ups. Hollywood Holt Hinton got an interception this week. He showed some ups. Yeah, he had, he got up a little bit on that one. He got yeah. he, he had a uh, about a twelve inch vertical. Eight f- at least, <laughs> at least. <laughs> All right, eight fifty five. That is our sports update and our pirate report, and uh, that's it for today. We don't have time for the pirate uh, for the uh, laugh track. Wasn't that funny anyway? Uh, let's remind everybody that we'll be on the air with our coverage of ECU in South Florida tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. on 94.3 The Game. And, of course, uh, Pirate Sports Network coverage will begin at 1.30 on 107.9 and 94.3. We'll have, we'll have you covered on our Interbanks Media family of stations. So uh, be here with us tomorrow and uh, be careful out there. Be careful today. It's already raining pretty heavy. Yeah. Here in Greenville, we've got um, – Long duration, um, two to four feet of uh, uh, inundation into the ground, long low-lying areas. Uh, we are really going to have problems along the Noose River today and tomorrow, so careful as she goes. Potential for flash flooding, uh, minor river flooding possible, all of eastern North Carolina. Uh, we are going to get strong northeast winds today and a few tornadoes possible, so uh, be very cautious today, and we're talking about strong winds and uh, very, very dangerous seas for anybody who's even contemplating getting out on the water. Who in the world would get in a boat today? But, you know, there's probably somebody. So this is going to be a prolonged uh, impact of wind, rain, and elevated water levels through the weekend. So please be careful and remember, turn around, don't drown. I can't believe some of the video of these people driving through these water puddles and they get in real trouble. Uh, Be safe, and we will see you back here next week on Talk of the Town. Have a great weekend, everybody, and be careful. We're on location today at Fabric and Home Furnishings, Arlington Village on Arlington Boulevard here in Greenville, one of my favorite places in town, one of my favorite people in town. My buddy Lisa Pendry is here. And Lisa, when I walked in this morning, the place always looks great, but there's something new here. you got a brand new room. Tell us what's going on. We do, Henry. We are opening a Norwalk Gallery, and we are so excited because this company is so custom. Been in business since 1902, built in Norwalk, Ohio. Tons of wood colors to choose from, over 900 fabric choices, and I've got a design team that can make it fabulous and help you find unique styles. So when you say custom, a custom furniture line, what does that mean exactly? You can literally choose the cushion, the fabric. You can even choose the thread color with this company. So wood choices, amazing fabrics, put three fabrics on one sofa, as much fun as you want to have. And that's what people want these days. They want it to be exactly the way they want it, so you can get that with Norwalk. You can. All right, what else is new? You've always got some other interesting things going on here. Well, we have some new fabrics that have arrived, but I've also, in this new showroom, I've added a friend of mine that's opened a company in Hickory, North Carolina, called Hickory Lux. Done business with him for a long time, but we're adding to that because he can deliver in six to eight weeks instead of eight months, like some of these companies are, you know, doing right now. And as we always say, Fabric and Home Furnishings is a furniture store and so much more. And the so much more is you guys offer design services. I know you're a designer yourself. You have a design team here, so you can offer that full service for people. I do. I've got the best design team ever. We do commercial design and residential. And there's a lot of decisions that go into what you want your home to be. So we send somebody right out to the house for a flat one-time fee, not an hourly fee. And we analyze it, make a friend, and make it easy and painless and fabulous for people. Fabric and home furnishings here in Arlington Village. My friend Lisa Pendry, it's a furniture store and so much more. Come see them.